Good morning. I'm Dr. Tom Salt. And you are? <laughs> I'm Elizabeth, a registered nurse and whole life coach. Usually you say you're a medical doctor, a functional <laughs> medicine practitioner. So I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, I guess I got <laughs> tired of saying all that stuff. We are talking today about uh, joyous movement and chronic illness and how even small amounts of joyous movement, notice we said joyous movement and not drudgerous exercise, mm -hmm. <laughs> can improve your immunity, your hormones, your detoxification, your mood, and much more. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's a really important idea that exercise is just like a medicine and it has a dose, right? And there is a dose of exercise that's too much. In the past, people have, you know, especially doctors, they've thought perhaps, you know, things like chronic fatigue syndrome or chronic Lyme disease are just in your head and you can just exercise your way out of it. Well, that's just false. And recent studies prove that to be false. And this morning here in the family room, I posted a paper that illustrates how that's false. I got my spike, spark eyebrow going again here this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and so there is this dose relationship. And, uh, you know, if you suffer from chronic illness, you know that you wake up some morning and you feel halfway decent. And what do you do? You do too much. You do everything in sight, don't you? Yeah, Try to and, catch and up. while you're doing it, it feels great because you're actually doing these things yeah. and you're able to, to sustain. But then you wake up the next morning and you're like, oh, why am I so tired? And then for the mornings to follow, and why do I hurt takes, so bad? Um, it takes a few days for you to get back from that because I think we're always trying to push that ceiling. Um, yeah, you of in, doing too much. You you overdosed. You know, mm -hmm. if you overdose on Tylenol, you die. If you overdose on aspirin, you die. And uh, you can overdose, especially if you have a chronic illness. You can overdose on exercise. Now, I'm an exerciser. I like to get outdoors. I like to get into it. So I'm not an anti-exercise guy. I'm just appropriate dosing, right? Appropriate dose. So, um, you know, people, if you have chronic illness, you you know how this works, right? You have had um, a, a severe, perhaps, flare of your chronic Lyme or a severe flare of your uh, fibromyalgia or your chronic fatigue syndrome or whatever from... Waking up one morning feeling kind of good and cleaning the house mm -hmm. or, you know, doing everything in sight because finally a day when I can catch up. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? How do you make these judgments about um, about how much to do or what kinds of things to do or what, you know, what kinds of things can you do when you have chronic illness? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one thing is really, you know, look at your history. Okay, when I do this amount of activity, I know that it brings about a negative consequence. So really kind of take inventory of what you have tolerated before in the past because that's a good indicator of what you're going to be able to tolerate in the future. And for some of us, um, you know, maybe our joyous movement for the day is cooking um, supper for our family. And even if you don't like to cook, I guarantee that you like to eat and that you like to feel good. So, you know, a lot of times we concentrate on the task at hand when really we should be looking at the desired result. Okay, so I want to have a healthy meal and I want to feel good after I eat this meal. Okay, I'm going to put some joy into the cooking because I know what it's going to bring about in the outcome. And that, that's a challenge mm -hmm. because when you feel crummy, it's so much easier to, to grab the comfort foods and the easy foods and not necessarily prepare the healthy foods. And the truth is sometimes our family members and our kids especially aren't as um, maybe appreciative of the effort we've put in mm -hmm. to cook, uh, even though we're doing something very important for them. Um, I know when I get the groans, I've really made a healthy meal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I get the groans a lot, like, oh, or the eye roll, or <laughs> yeah. So my, maybe... my oldest son will look, and he'll kind of, like, look, pick through the dish, like, okay, there's peppers, there's onions, there's cauliflower, rice oh. cauliflower, because I put rice cauliflower in everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a way to sneak in some uh, vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
um, which by the way, we have um, riced cauliflower as like almost like hash browns in the morning mm -hmm. with, you know, maybe some mixed vegetables thrown in and some onions and whatever else. And, and it's fantastic. But, you know, if, if you are really challenged at joyous movement, Finding ways to make your activities of daily living, making those things you need to do in order to survive and thrive, joyous. That's a really important thing. Now, if you can get out and do a mild walk, even if it's just to the end of the driveway and back, that's that's a nice thing. But if that's going to throw you over the top, don't do it. Don't force more dose of exercise than you can tolerate. So I like to say for most people on most days, if you wake up in the morning, most people with chronic illness are way behind, right? They haven't been able to clean their house to the way they'd like to. They haven't been able to do chores. They haven't been able to do this, that, or the other thing. You look around and you say, well, what am I going to do today? What would I like to do today? Well, I'd like to do these 10 things. Okay, well, do half of it. Try to do half of it. The other thing is, is, as Elizabeth said, we're always trying to get right up to that threshold. But that's a bad idea. Getting right there every day, even if you're a professional athlete and you go right to the limit every single day, you overtrain. Mm -hmm. And you're not a professional athlete. You're uh, somebody with chronic illness. So instead of going right to the limit, you know, if, if you notice that when you go over the limit, you only suffer minor consequences, well, go to 80% of the limit. But if you go over the limit and you crash and burn for days or weeks, only go to 50% of the limit. Make a wide margin there. But zero is not the answer either. Mm -hmm. Movement, some kind of movement. And that can be sitting in a chair and swinging your legs. It can be standing in the kitchen to cook a healthy meal. And we will be talking tomorrow about nutrition and why that is so important. But, you know, what kinds of things can um, movement do for an individual? I think first, especially when you incorporate the word joyous into it, mm. it can elevate your mood. Um, I think it's really important that we put joy into our movement. And, you know, maybe you don't feel like you're moving in a lot, a lot in a day or, you know, you're doing enough activity. Well... I suggest download an app. There's a lot of free apps that calculate your steps or you could get a Fitbit. And I think you'd be surprised at how much you actually do move. And then when you bring that awareness into your movements and you treat it like an exercise, so, you know, walking into the grocery store, walking around the grocery store, I mean, that's all movement. Um, when you bring some awareness into it and some joy into it, it really um, changes the whole picture and it changes the outcome. You know, when you walk into the grocery store, most of us think, oh, I hate it, right? But if you get present and you're walking around the outside of the grocery store, which is where all the good stuff is, the healthy stuff, there's some really beautiful things in the grocery store. If you look at red or yellow or orange peppers or you look at heads of cauliflower or beautiful radishes or tomatoes or potatoes or you name the thing chocolate, <laughs> chocolate. Um, there are some very very beautiful things in the grocery store and if you try to get present so that's you know that's for Thursday but um, present is about stress management but th this all is seamlessly integrated right they are yep there, we, we create boxes around them, but there's no box. It's, it's one big container, and these are just little pieces of the container. So they do all intertwine, and I think that's important to remember as well. Yeah. i got to stop looking at myself in the camera because I'm now leaning this way about 45 degrees because this is straight up and down. And I feel like in the thing. I, I bet me really. I, I look at that the whole time are you. So yeah. I'm probably all over the place. And... <laughs> I got to lean way over here so I look like I'm straight up and oh, down. Oh, yeah. You are straight down and you're totally crooked. <laughs> no. camera. Yeah. But anyway, this concept of joyous movement, super important. And and the joyous is is a key factor. It's not, you know, I said this yesterday, but it's just so true. I have to say it again. I go out 
outside and you know whether it's taking a walk out in the woods or going to the local park and taking a hike uh, on the trails or you know going skiing or going backcountry skiing or whatever uh, do it for hours and it, it the time just goes by like that i go into the basement and get on a treadmill or a stationary bike and in about 10 or 15 minutes i just want to die right it's just so awful and part of that is my own mental state i i have to choose joy in that and and the reason i exercise is is frankly not for health benefits the reason my motivation for exercising is I hate it when I have to stop doing something fun because I'm tired. <laughs> I hate that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I exercise to stay in enough shape to exercise. And fortunately for me, I like to do pretty aggressive, uh, fun things. So it means I have to be in reasonably good shape. Getting over neuro. Oh, hi, Denise, by the way, getting over neuropathy. I daily work on my rebounder and chi machine. Both are easy on the muscles and my sanity in the COVID days. Yeah, COVID and sanity. Boy, how are any of us sane? I think recently. COVID and sanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah, rebounders. Um, although I have to tell you a story about my brother. My brother, um, he's an ex surfer and, you know, kind of. We were from California originally, and he was a big time surfer and he decided he wanted to get back into shape and he bought a rebounder and he thought it'd be a great idea to just jump on it and rebound on it for an hour the very first day. <laughs> well, of course, that crushed him. It totally wrecked him. And he, he said, I hate that rebounder. I'm never using it again. Well, it wasn't the rebounder's fault, right? It was the idea that I'm I, I'm actually, you know, in his mind, he's thinking, well, I'm 25 and a surfer and in good shape, so I'm going to do this for an hour. When in reality, he was probably more like 65 and unfortunately morbidly obese. <laughs> so you have to kind of get your head around the truth of who you are right now today when you mm -hmm. start an exercise program. And I'm guilty of that, too. I always go out and think, well, in the fall, I was running this speed um and doing all these, you know, aggressive hill climbs and I go out in the spring and I kill myself because I, I don't realize that I, I have a different kind of fitness over the winter. It's a skiing fitness and even a cross country skiing fitness is different than a running fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 10 minutes, 10 minutes at a time. That's right, Denise. Um, or even less if you're if you have, you know, if you're if your threshold is 10 minutes, you better do it for five or eight. So, you know, if, if that's where you start to get into trouble with your chronic illness symptoms flaring. What other kinds of uh, activities do you like to do? Or do you find helpful for your, your coaching clients? Um, I find uh, anything outdoors, especially just um, even for the people that live in the city um, or who aren't out in, in nature all the time, there's usually a local park with like a path around it. So just getting outside for like 10 minutes at a time and even just 10 minutes a day starting off makes a huge difference of, you know, walking outdoors. I just feel like um, incorporating uh, joyous movement into an outdoor space carries so many more benefits that we might not even be aware of. So I always encourage going some, spending some time outdoors, um, some grounding exercises, um, breathing with the walking outdoors. I like to clean. Um, we all need to clean our homes, so I make sure that I'm playing good music, listening to a great inspiring book, something that kind of keeps me upbeat and going. Um, while I clean and I try to incorporate that into my activity for the day and um, I have found with the use of a, you know a Fitbit that I easily get in 10,000 to 15,000 steps a day just by you know these normal activities that I don't even see as exercise or movement when really they're a, a key part of you know my activity in any given day. There's a great line or, or paragraph in the book, The Five Love Languages, <clears throat> where this, the, the psychologist is working with this husband on kind of a uh, individual basis. And, you know, they've been working as a couples therapy thing. And, and he says, I hate to vacuum. And the therapist says, well, nobody asked you if you like to vacuum. What you were asked is, do you want your wife to 
to receive the message that you love her. And of course, one of her love languages was acts of service, right? And so one of the acts of service that he could do was vacuuming. And, and it's sort of that way in our house. I feel incompetent to do most things around the house, but I can kind of push the vacuum back and forth and get most of the spots most of the time. So I just try to vacuum because I feel like it's something I can contribute to. And because frankly, my eye for clutter is pretty blind. <laughs> not there. <laughs> we'll just say it's not existent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need a seeing eye dog for my clutter. Yeah. So, so anyway, you know, we all, but so what is it? It becomes a choice. It becomes instead of, oh, I hate doing this. It's, oh, I love doing something that my wife appreciates. I love doing something that my children appreciate i love doing something that my health mm -hmm. appreciates right turn it more into i hate doing this to i love feeling like this i love you know seeing this on their faces um i love the time that we spend around the table after i've prepared a meal um yeah, you know, yeah. concentrate on the positive <laughs> aspects of the outcome, not the drudgery along the way. <laughs> and then you can kind of treat the drudgery like it's something fun, too. You know, and, and I had to get my head around that. But just think about Christmas decorations. I just hate doing that. But you know what? It's really nice to have a festive home. Mm -hmm. And what does that do to the people who come into the home? Of course, nobody comes into the home in COVID. <laughs> but, you know, you can imagine they might. Um, you know, what does that do to their mood? And, you know, it, does it bring joy to people just seeing the effort you put in? And, and yeah, it does. And then, you know, like our tree this year was really dry. So by the time we got it to the door to get it outside, there was not a single needle on that tree. They were all on the Didn't floor. Didn't feel like it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, and so there was cleanup involved, but you know what? In a couple of hours, it was all cleaned up and we had uh, this beautiful tree and festive lights and it just changed and change is good to change your environment. So mm -hmm. now we're going to do something else, I guess. Some, some other thing she's going to make me do <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to uh, bring festivity, br bring into, festivity the into the house. Yeah. Okay, so joyous movement. And uh, if you're interested in the science, there's a paper. In, I, th th this morning at 7.25 a.m., there was a paper posted and it talks about, you know, how movement has been associated with a better immune system, better detoxification, better hormone regulation, better mood, and many other things. Mm -hmm. So you can read that if you want to go deeper into it, but that's that's the bottom line. That's that's the cliff notes of it. And um, so tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. And we talk about nutrition mm -hmm. tomorrow. And um, I talked. Uh, I will. We will talk about nutrition and the immune system. So. You know, we talk a lot about nutrition and weight management or nutrition and this that, or the other thing. But, you know, uh, nutrition is the building blocks. It is the fabric of our reality. And if you don't have the building blocks, things don't work right. And that is really true in the immune system. Mm -hmm. And in the era of COVID, maybe you should be thinking more about nutrition, not less, even though... On some level, it's the stress and strain of being isolated makes it hard. It's still probably more important than ever. So that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Nutrition and the immune system. Mm -hmm. All right. Until tomorrow. Yeah. Any last words of wisdom? I always give you this chance. Yeah, you do. But nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good for the day. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Have Bye. a wonderful day. Bye-bye.